Have you ever wondered what it takes to launch a fully loaded fighter jet off a ship that s essentially a floating city? Today, we're re-diving deep into the incredible technology that makes an aircraft carrier one of the most complex machines ever built. This isn't just a big boat, it's a masterpiece of engineering. A mobile airbase that projects power across the globe, from launching planes at incredible speeds to catching them on a tiny strip of deck. The systems at play are nothing short of mind-blowing. So, buckle up as we explore the tech that defines a modern aircraft carrier. First up, let's talk about getting planes into the air. Imagine trying to get a 30-ton aircraft loaded with fuel and weapons from zero to over 150 miles per hour in just two seconds. On land, you'd need a very long runway. At sea, you have about 300 feet. This is where the catapult system comes in. And the most common type is called catabar, which stands for catapult assisted takeoff, but arrested recovery. The catapult assisted takeoff part is what we're focusing on here. For decades, the workhorse has been the steam catapult. Deep within the carrier, massive boilers generate high pressure steam. This steam is piped to the catapult cylinders, which run underneath the flight deck. When it's time to launch, the Jet S nose gear is attached to a small shuttle that sits in a track on the deck. This shuttle is connected to two pistons inside the cylinders. The pilot pushes the engine to full afterburner. The jet strains against its restraints, and with a signal from the deck crew, a valve is open. A colossal blast of steam shoots into the cylinders, rocketing the pistons, the shuttle, and the attached aircraft down the track. The sheer force is immense, accelerating the plane with a G-force that would make most of us black out. Once the aircraft reaches the end of the deck, it's already flying, detaching from the shuttle which is then brought back to do it all over again. But steam is old, the future, and the present, on the newest carriers like the USS Gerald R. Ford, is the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or E. Instead of steam, Emmels uses a powerful linear induction motor. The same basic tech you might find in a maglev train. A massive electrical pulse, drawing an incredible amount of energy, generates a powerful, moving magnetic field that propels the shuttle and the aircraft down the track. Emmels has huge advantages. It's much smoother which puts less stress on the aircraft, extending the life of the aircraft. It's also more precise. Operators can dial in the exact amount of force needed for different aircraft, from heavy fighters to lighter drones. This level of control is something steam catapults just can't match. It's also more efficient and requires less maintenance, making the whole process quicker and more reliable. Okay, so we've launched the plane, but what goes up must come down, and landing a high-speed jet on a moving, pitching, and rolling deck is arguably even harder than taking off. This is where the arrested recovery part of Catabar comes into play. The pilot is aiming for a gentle touchdown. They're essentially performing a controlled crash. They approach the carrier at a specific angle and speed with their tail hooked down. The goal is to snag one of four thick steel cables, known as arresting wires or cross-deck pendants stretched across the landing area. These wires are just the visible part of a much larger system. Each cable is connected to a complex hydraulic engine located in the machinery rooms below the flight deck. When the tail hook catches a wire, it pulls the cable out, and this motion drives a large hydraulic ram that forces fluid through a control valve. This system absorbs the aircraft's kinetic energy, bringing it from about 150 miles per hour to a dead stop in just 300 feet in extreme and violent deceleration. If the pilot misses all four wires, it's called a bulk. They immediately slam the throttle to full power and take off again to circle around for another attempt. This is why pilots always approach the landing at high power, ready to fly away if they don't catch a wire. Just like with launch systems, recovery technology is also getting a major upgrade. The traditional hydraulic system is being replaced by the advanced arresting gear, or A. Instead of hydraulics, AAG uses a simple energy-absorbing water. Twister think of a paddle wheel spinning in a vortex of water and an electric motor. The system offers more precise control over the arresting forces and can handle a wider range of aircraft, from heavy, manned fighters to lightweight, unmanned drones, without needing major adjustments. It's a simpler, more reliable, and more flexible system that reduces stress on both the aircraft and the pilot. So we can launch and land planes, but how does this floating city even function? An aircraft carrier is home to over 5,000 people and dozens of aircraft. It needs a staggering amount of power to run everything from the catapults and arresting gear to the radar system's communication suites, elevators that move planes between decks kitchens that prepare 18,000 meals a day, and the lights in every sailor's bunk. 
for most of naval history, this power came from conventional sources, like oil-fired boilers creating steam to turn turbines. However, modern supercarriers, particularly those in the U.S. Navy's Nimitz and Ford classes, are nuclear. They typically have two nuclear reactors on board. These reactors don't power the ship directly like a car engine. Instead, they act as massive heat sources. Through nuclear fission, they generate an incredible amount of heat, which is used to boil water and create high-pressure steam. This steam then spins turbines connected to electrical generators, producing all the electricity the ship needs. The steam also drives the main propulsion shafts, turning the ship's massive propellers each, weighing as much as 30 tons. The biggest advantage of nuclear power is in a nuclear carrier can operate for over 20 years without refueling its reactors. This gives it virtually unlimited range, allowing it to stay at sea for months on end, deployable anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. Its only limitation is the need to restock on food, supplies, and aviation fuel for the aircraft. This is why carriers travel with an entire fleet of support ships, forming a carrier strike group. This group includes destroyers and cruisers for defense, as well as supply ships that provide everything from jet fuel to fresh vegetables, allowing the carrier to remain on station indefinitely. The infrastructure of a carrier is a marvel of self-sufficiency, a floating fortress that is always ready for action. From the raw power of steam and electromagnetism to the controlled violence of arrested landings and the silent, enduring energy of a nuclear reactor, every part of an aircraft carrier is a testament to human ingenuity. It's a complex, interconnected system where every piece of technology must work flawlessly in one of the most demanding environments on Earth. The ability to launch and recover aircraft at sea is what transforms a ship into a strategic asset of immense power, capable of influencing events across the entire globe. Thanks so much for watching this deep dive into the tech of aircraft carriers. It's truly fascinating stuff. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about incredible feats of engineering, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comments what other technology you'd like us to explore next. See you in the next one.